it's been six years of learning about power boats yeah. with Gene Engel and the Orange Cup Regatta. Welcome, Gene. Well, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be here. And of course, uh, I always enjoy talking about boats. So if it floats, I'll talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we moved it this year, or you moved it this year, to October. Tell us about the benefits. Well, we, we moved it uh, from March to October, basically because of the virus. And uh, when we did that, we found out, of course, in March, we were always getting a front coming through. And the problem with fronts in the March is they have a way of hanging around for a while. Mm -hmm. Well, we moved it to October because of the virus, and it, and it did two things. Number one, the, the, the drivers race all year long, and, and they race for points. And whoever at the end of the year at the national meeting in January uh, they receive a lot of awards. What our race does is it's actually two races. It's one, one race on Saturday and one race on Sunday, so they get double points. Being at the end of the season, those drivers that really want to add more points, they're, they're coming mm -hmm. and they're going to be here. So we found that out. We also found out that in October when a front comes through, it just zips through and, and, <laughs> and we send it on to Miami. And okay. so, yeah. So the water was perfect. It couldn't have been better. Well, so perfect, a record was broken. That, so that's I mean, true. Uh, Bobby King from Michigan uh, broke uh, in the E350 class, uh, which is a very, very fast class. He broke the record by four uh, seconds, uh, uh, and it was like 94 uh, miles mm -hmm. an hour. Now, when we talk about 94 miles an hour, that's the average of the, of the, of the course. In the straightaways, he's going well over 100 and something miles an hour. Oh yeah, there. Yeah. I, I mean, I was there to watch him break it. So exactly. It, was, it so, is amazing how fast they're you know, going. I, talk, I talked with Bobby the other day, and I said, "Okay, what do you think?" He said, "I think I'm going to break my own record." So I said, <laughs> "Come on, <laughs> we'll be here waiting on you." Gene, talk a little bit about because it's uh, boat racing is so diverse. It has so many classes, yes. different power, different hulls, that type of stuff. True help our viewers understand kind of how does that work uh, underneath the American Power Boat Association, it's a sanctioned event, um, it has to be sanctioned, we're going to break world records, but um, to talk a little bit about the classes. Well, the, uh, in, in our ca uh, case, we're running 11 different classes, uh, but you're exactly right, there, is, there are so many classes of uh, boat racing, I mean there's river racing and ocean uh, racing, I mean uh, it's uh, it, it's uh, then you've got the unlimited hydroplanes, uh, which Bernie Little, of course, from from Lakeland for many years, uh, had the Miss Budweiser. Uh, so there's there's actually venues and regattas for all of the different classes. Uh, we chose the classes we we have chosen, which is one of them is your favorite, uh, is the Jersey Skiff, and. Uh, uh, we uh, we kind of affectionately refer to them as the clowns because <laughs> they <there's>, they're fitting. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's two to a boat and the, and they have cages on them because they put cages on them because these boats sometimes rock up and they had a problem with the propellers chewing the people up in the boat next to them so they put these cages on them now and and they are fun to watch and they are very fast and uh, it, it's uh, is. Uh, Mark said it's, it, it was a skiff, and then what they did, the, the skiff was used for bootlegging many years ago, and they just threw an engine in it so the feds couldn't catch them. And that's how that class mm. started. The other classes that we have, of course, are the hydroplanes, uh, the inboard hydroplanes, and we're now the largest uh, in the southeast. And uh, they're fast, uh, well over 100 and something miles an hour. They're all in capsules where the uh, Jersey skiffs are not in capsule. We do run several classes that do, do not have capsules on them. Uh, and uh, so we, we, we run the hydroplanes. We also run a class of what they call the outboard performance cl uh, class, which is the tunnel boats. Uh, these boats are extremely fast. They make sharp, sharp turns. It takes a lot of skill. I have no idea how many G's they pull, but I can tell you that to run one of those boats, you have to be in very good physical condition. So. I mean, they were really the the, the hydroplanes were really it it and the plane is in the name, but it's really hydrojet. 
I mean, yeah. that was you know, walking around and taking a look at them and talking with the drivers this last year. That is really a, they are they are strapped in in a, in a safety capsule and yes. and literally flying on the water. Well, they uh, they wear a five point harness just like NASCAR does. They also are on oxygen. They also are on radio to the to the shore. Uh, they have a, a per, uh, an individual on the shore that's telling them what to do and where to go. And uh, they're in those capsules, and because of the capsules, and, and of course I always like to talk about safety, because that is one of the strong things that we really stand behind. You know, we have to have four divers, certified EMS people, mm -hmm. on the lake at all times. We cannot run those boats without that. In case we have a blowover and they're upside down, then we've got to be able to get those drivers out of the boat. Uh, a lot of the boats now, though, kind of interesting, they come with a trap door in the bottom of them, so we can open that up and pull them up through the bottom of the boat. So, But safety is very important to us, and uh, we have to have, of course, the ambulance on site. We have to have every safety factor we can have. I was going to let Gene have a have a moment for, a, for some bragging about the grandson here. So the film, the documentary, uh, yeah. absolutely fantastic. Tell us about the success of this documentary. Well, of course, obviously, I don't miss a chance to talk about our grandson and, and his talent. Uh, he, uh, he did a documentary on the history of the Orange Cup Regatta, and it's called The Lake of Records uh, that Mark earlier alluded to. Uh, and he uh, wanted to do the history. Uh, my dad started the Orange Cup uh, Regatta actually about 88 years ago, but this will be our 84th running. Mm -hmm. But he did this documentary, and it went out all over the country. It has won quite a few awards. Uh, he, a very good friend of his wrote the music for it. But we tried to give a little bit of the history of how the Orange Cup Regatta came about. And as Mark also mentioned, we're, we're second the oldest sport in, in, the, in, in the county, mm -hmm. uh, other than uh, I guess you could also include water skiing in there, uh, yeah. Mark. Mm -hmm. That's right up there. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, we are extremely proud of him. He does uh, quite a bit of uh, work for uh, Stingray Chevrolet. He also does a, a feature on every Thursday called Behind Glows Doors, mm -hmm. which where they travel to different people who have exotic cars behind their garage door okay. and, and, and interview them. And it's quite an interesting program. And so um, he loves doing documentaries. We love talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope that everybody that uh, follows YouTube will go on YouTube and look up Lake of Records and uh, enjoy about 35 minutes of the history of, uh, of the Orange Cup. And it behind, really behind, well behind garage doors. That you got taken behind garage doors a lot. When a few you were times. A, naughty little kid. <laughs> a few times. Yeah. <laughs> and what what I loved about the Lake of Records uh, was was how it's really it is a love story for the city and the lake. It really is uh, is well. And I'm glad that you brought that up because we have looked at other venues for the Orange Cup. Uh, we could really we, we've grown pretty large and. The pit area is um, probably the most important area during the regatta, and, and the pit boss who's running the pit area, we've got to move those boats, and we've, we crane most of mm -hmm. them into the lake. And uh, we have really thought about that, but every time we think about it, we think that, you know, we're, we're really bl breaking that line of history. Because when my dad started that Orange Cup regatta, back some 88 years ago, uh, he, he laid out a mile and three quarter course. Now we race a one mile course. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I just grew up with, with boat racing. I mean, uh, our new football coach at Southeastern said he grew up with football. Well, that's how I grew up. If, mm -hmm. it, if it was a, if anything, if it floated, I liked it. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, and you, and you think about the length of time it has yeah. been in the city. It's, I mean, most of the residents in Lakeland have grown up well, with the orange cut. That's the other good point is when my dad started, it was primarily orange groves all the way around the lake, and it didn't, the noise didn't bother the trees. And of course, now <laughs> we have a lot of homes around the lake, but I think everybody around the lake appreciates it and they enjoy it, and uh, they know it's coming every year, and, uh, and we love October. And uh, 
The dates on that, by the way, is there, it's Saturday, 15th and 16th of October. And uh, I had the dates wrong yeah, originally. Dates. I said the 2021-22 yeah. mm -hmm. or 23, something like that. But it's the weekend before mm -hmm. the World Showski Challenge. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we, um, uh, we encourage everybody to come. Uh, there is, uh, it's free. Come sit on the shores of Lake Hollingsworth and watch the race. Uh, we're, unfortunately, we can't, because of insurance purposes and other safety purposes, we can't allow uh, anybody into the pit area. But what's interesting is that you can stand on the other side of the fence and see everything that's going on in mm -hmm. the pit area. And uh, another point that you had mentioned too, Jack, that uh, when you look at those hydroplanes, they, they are an engineering feat. I mean, if you watch the aeron on the front of those boats, that's what it's constantly mm -hmm. moving so that they, if they get a gust of air, they can lower it down and put the nose down. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's just, uh, and they're working on those engines constantly. I mean, so it's, uh, it's in my blood. You know, and, it's a labor of love. And, uh, I mean, that takes a bit. I can, unbelievable. I can tell you yeah. that uh, I, uh, our son, Walt, uh, is starting to become more and more involved with us. Uh, which uh, I'm very excited about, and uh, and Steve Hurley, who actually uh, owns uh, Stingray Chevrolet, has also become part of our race uh, committee. Uh, so we we have a great group. Our, all of our officials are just fantastic. Uh, Jeff and Sally Titus, I can't I can't say enough about them. There are and and Jeff is the pit boss also, and he's also the, the chairman of the Region 5, which is Florida, Georgia, and, and Alabama. For APBA. For APBA, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, so they, they have, uh, in fact, they're in a race right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so they, uh, they're, they're good, but all of our folks, uh, uh, Howie Nichols uh, <laughs> runs the, Howie runs the clocks, and I, I mean, just, our team has been together for so long that it, it really comes together every year. Uh, everybody knows what they, they need to do, what has to be get, gotten done. And I, can, uh, you know, I have to say that how much support uh, Polk County Sports Marketing uh, gives us. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, when, 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 when I look at all these sports, Mark, and we wanted a 200 and something, about 270 a year sporting yep. events in yep. Polk County, and I just can't believe that that's what it is. And when you said that we are the hub of, of, of sports right now, yeah. it, truer words could not be spoken. Uh, well, Gene, uh, you were part of the start of the uh, Polk County Sports Marketing back in 1992. Right. And everybody couldn't believe that we had 17 events the very first year. And, mm -hmm. you know, quadrupled <laughs> after, you know, it just kept going and going, 17 going, weekend going. now. But it's, uh, yeah, it's been a long, long road to hold. The, you know, I think, I don't know, Gene, we can't really talk about it too much, but uh, there's been some efforts at uh, moving the American Powerboat Association headquarters right. from Detroit down here to Polk County. Uh, those negotiations are, are underway. Mm -hmm. And uh, to have the governing body of a sport of powerboat racing based right here uh, in, in the county of 554 lakes, no better place to to do it, and you can race or or test or whatever, 365 days a year. Yeah, you know, and so well, the American Powerboat Association headquarters has been in Detroit for uh, yeah, I probably a hundred years or better. That's a long time. And uh, I really don't know how long, but they've been there. They were started. That's where they began. And as Marcus said, that uh, the negotiations are underway right now, but. Uh, uh, the board of the American Power Boat Association, uh, uh, Mark and his team, as well as a few of us, made a presentation to them that uh, you, you could you could, you couldn't help but come here. <laughs> I mean, it, it was good, and uh, so we're hoping that that uh, that'll work out. And uh, uh, and uh, and you know, going back, Mark, uh, to 1992, and and sitting there in our first meeting, and I'm thinking to myself, you know. I'm not real sure this is ever going to go anywhere. <laughs> well, I I have to go before everybody and tell you that uh, I never dreamed it would get where it is today. Uh, it's just amazing, uh, and our staff is unbelievable. I mean, uh, and what it amounted to was just getting out and promoting it. And our staff—that's what they do. They promote sports for Polk County, and 
I'm happy to be a part of it. And well, it's paid, you know, and, and Gene, you talked about this for years that it, it's paid huge dividends through some real tough times, including 911, mm -hmm. the Great Recession, and and even COVID. Um, it's the most resilient of any tourism sector there is. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that we have found out over the years is that how bad, it doesn't matter how bad the economy gets, doesn't matter what the price of gasoline, basically our use sports are recession proof. And um, so uh, uh, that's brought us through a lot mm -hmm. of hard times and put a lot of heads in beds as we say. And, oh yeah. Our resort uh, uh, tax, uh, tourist development, our tax is uh, uh, just keeps growing, keeps growing, and keeps growing. Well, it's an exciting time. I'm really looking forward to the race this year. We've got so much going on, Gene, in that time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, Orange Cup is a staple of Polk County sports, has been for 88 years. Um, and it, I tell you, to take the family, it's free. And you can go, and, as Gene said, you can walk around the pit. You can check everything out uh, that's going on in the pits. You can go through uh, Florida Southern to the flank, flank, the Frank Lloyd Wright architecture. I'm right. hungry for some steak flank or whatever it's called. <laughs> but uh, uh, over at Red Door, you, right? after you, you go through Florida Southern, you can then walk over to Red Door, Polk County. Uh, Museum of Art right across the street. You could do it all right there. In one, in, in one or two days. Yeah. And so it's just like, hey, let's have a staycation right here in Polk County and watch, uh, you know, just an unbelievable race. Hopefully we'll see some new world records uh, broken again this year. It is the Lake of Records. That is Lake Hollingsworth. Gene, thanks so much for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. Well, it's always a pleasure. And of course, I always enjoy talking about the Orange Cup, and uh, Jack, thank you. I more uh, definitely enjoy talking about our grandson. That's one of my favorite subjects. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thanks again, Gene. Hall of Famer, Polk County Sports Hall of Famer, Gene Engel.